We must now move to questions to the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. Before I call the first speaker, can I congratulate the Minister on his appointment? Welcome him to his first question time as Minister. And inform the House that question number 12 has been withdrawn. And we start the listed questions. And I call Mr. Michael Majemsey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I join with you in welcoming the Minister. Uh, question number one. Can I, first of all, thank uh, both Ms. yourself, Principal Deputy Speaker, for the congratulations and to Mr. Uh, Majemsey. I'm pleased that the latest figures demonstrate that the economic recovery is progressing. This is evident across both short-term and also our long-term indicators. The claimant count measure, which is best used as a short-term indicator, shows that the number of people claiming unemployment benefits has now fallen for a 28th consecutive month reducing by 20,500 over that period. The Labour Force Survey, which is best used for examining medium to long-term trends and making cross-country comparisons, is showing similar improvement with the current unemployment rate at 6.2 per cent, down considerably on its previous high. That same positive trend is also reflected in job growth with nearly 30,000 net new jobs added to the local economy since the start of 2012. However, I don't want anybody to feel I'm not complacent, uh, despite what are positive figures. And I think all of us in the House will recognise, as I do, that we still have a number of labour market challenges to address. I call Mr Majemsey for a supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And can I thank uh, the Minister for... Uh, those figures that he has quoted to us. Could I quote to him two other figures that he omitted? Uh, the economically inactive uh, figure, the highest in the UK, up 4,000 from this time last year, but most crucially, youth unemployment, again the highest in the UK, up 3,000 from last year. Will the Minister undertake to give the same deal to our young people that, get, that they get in Scotland? Uh, namely, they are offered when they leave school a place in education or training or employment, and we do not have this indictment on this House that our young people in their hundreds and thousands leave school to go on the dole. Thank you. The member makes a very strong point uh, of uh, our young people, which concerns all of us uh, greatly. I know that in terms of uh, economic activity, if inactivity, if we look at sort of the European standard measurements, um, we, we are, we're slightly below, and we're also slightly uh, below that uh, in the Republic of Ireland, but I accept fully the concerns that he has expressed. Uh, and it's going to be a joint approach, both by myself and uh, Minister Farry, uh, in conjunction with uh, DSD, Health, Social Services and Public Safety, and Invest Northern Ireland. Uh, we have a strategy. It's enabling su success. That's what we want to do. We want to enable success. And to do that, we have to tackle what the member rightly puts out as the high level of economic inactivity here. Now, that st strategy is going to look to see how we can reduce what are uh, persistently high levels of economic inactivity in Northern Ireland by helping those economically inactive groups make the transition uh, towards and into the labour market. And key within those target groups are the long-term sick and the disabled and those with family commitments, and particularly have in mind uh, lone parents and carers. Uh, now, the draft strategy was agreed at the Executive on the 16th of April. Uh, it was subsequently published by Derry and Dell Ministers on the 20th of April. And implementation has begun on a number of key points. I'll just give two, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, conscious of the time. But we have worked on a competitive pilot testing process to test innovative ways to both reduce inactivity and work has begun to develop the proposed way forward for that process and secondly establishing and facilitating a strategic forum to oversee the delivery issues and to improve coordination and increase public awareness of those who are economically inactive. Call Mr Jimmy Spratt. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker and can I too be associated with the remarks and congratulate my friend on uh, the Minister on his uh, new appointment. <clears throat> Since Northern Ireland uh, has had an economic downturn uh, 
right across the whole province and suffer job losses. What assessment does the Minister uh, have for future job creation uh, within the South Belfast constituency? Well, the member makes his point well, and I thank him for his congratulations. Um, I suppose South Belfast, like all of our constituencies uh, elsewhere in Northern Ireland, was impacted by the downturn. Um, however, I am pleased to say that I believe things are now moving in the right direction. For example, the latest figures show that there has been a sustained fall in the number of people claiming unemployment benefits in South Belfast since early 2013. That is a fall of almost 1,200, equivalent to a fall of approximately one-third. In light of both the member's question and what Mr Majimsi uh, raised in terms of the concerns for young people, it is particularly welcome that we are seeing significant falls in the number of claimants amongst young people aged 18 to 24. They have fallen by more than 600 since its recent peak. And there's also been improvements in the number of long-term unemployed. Uh, that's those who have been claiming uh, benefit for 12 months or more. And those numbers have fallen by more than 300 since the recent peak. And I think uh, it's important that the member uh, raises his constituency, but I think when we look at job opportunities um, and when we look at addressing unemployment in South Belfast, well, we shouldn't become overly localised. New jobs in any part of the city uh, will create opportunities for people right across uh, the city of Belfast and beyond, and I look forward to further progress in those areas. Call Mr. Pat Sheehan. question two, please. Firstly, uh, I believe the Composite Economic Index provides us with a good short-term measure on how the local economy is performing in the absence of GDP figures. However, to clarify, this measure does not drive growth, it measures growth. The latest results showed that local economic activity expanded by a relatively modest 1.1% on an annual basis. However, it is pleasing that the growth was driven by the private sector, which posted 2% growth uh, over the year. So the index shows our production sector has been performing particularly well. Uh, with services also posting solid growth. So while the construction sector is still facing difficulties, I welcome some emerging signs of growth in that sector. Call Mr. Sheehan for supplementary. I got a free last count. Uh, thank the minister for his answer. I'd also like to offer my congratulations to the minister on the recent appointment as new role. Uh, the economic index shows that uh, local economic growth has been flat in three of the, the last four quarters. Could the uh, minister tell us what proposals he has to ensure that we have sustainable local economic growth? I suppose the key point, and can I thank the member for uh, his congratulations, I believe one of the key levers, and it's not just what I believe, it's also what the Ulster University Economic Panel has told us for growing. Uh, for growth is that to see us develop our corporation tax. We simply need a date for when we're going to do that, uh, develop a reduction, and we need the rate for give to businesses for what that is there. Because the research is clear. There's a strong economic case for us lowering corporation tax. And I know member, many members, many ministers, including the first and deputy first ministers, worked very hard uh, to achieve that. And if we follow the research and, take, and reduce the rate to 12.5% in 2017, let's just for a moment consider the prize for local economic growth of where we could be. We could create almost 40,000 additional net jobs, and we could see our economy grow by 10%. And in, in particular, uh, for the West Belfast constituency, I note also that there has been some uh, improvements recently. The number of young people, again, it's been a theme in the House, aged 18 to 24, who were claiming unemployment benefit, has fallen by 900 since its peak in West Belfast. And that's equivalent to almost one half of all of the young claimants. And we have to continue 
to provide job opportunities, particularly for those young people. Um, when I look generally at the number of people claiming um, unemployment benefits in West Belfast since early 2013, um, that's fallen by almost 2,000, and that's equivalent of approximately one third. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And I too would congratulate the Minister. As a North Down resident, no doubt he will do a good job. Can the Minister give us his assessment on the economic impact and the need for political stability in Northern Ireland, following on from the need for a decision on welfare reform? Well, I think the more stability we, we have, the more we can uh, drive forward in promoting jobs and creating jobs and uh, building a, a, a wonderful future. Um, I, don't want, I know talks are underway, so I want to be diplomatic uh, in what I say because I want to see those talks come to a successful conclusion. I don't want to see anything there uh, that would jeopardise those. But all of us in the House should remember where we were uh, in 2011. We set a target to create 25,000 jobs. And I was there when that target was lifted from 20,000 to 25,000, because I remember the First Minister wanted to really drive job uh, creation at that time. We're sitting today with 37,277 jobs, a 49% increase on the target that we set ourselves. We set ourselves a target to have £1 billion of investment. Uh, we've got £2.7 billion of jobs investment, a staggering 167% increase on where we were. We set ourselves a target of $300 million in research and development, and we've delivered $520 million in terms of research and development, which is a 73% uh, increase. And we looked for £28 million in the Growth Loan Fund, and we've delivered £30.8 million through that fund. Northern Ireland is very much open for business. We saw one of the most tremendous uh, Dubai duty-free Irish Open a Pro 12 rugby. I was talking to hoteliers in Belfast, completely sold out, back to back. They were struggling to get people uh, accommodation. We have a great country, great sporting events, and an economy that has the potential to grow by almost 10 per cent and to deliver some 40,000 new jobs. Friends, that's a prize that none of us can afford to lose. Yeah, yeah. Call Mr. Fergal McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I too congratulate the Minister on his uh, uh, recent appointment and can I welcome the figures that he's uh, uh, reflected on there. But would he agree with me that the target figures that he's mentioned in relation to corporation tax will not shift us off the 66% uh, reliance on the public sector and 34% reliance on a weakened private sector, sufficient enough uh, to allow Northern Ireland uh, to stand on its own two feet? Well, it will certainly, if, you know, we look at unemployment today and I say to the member of 6.2 per cent, and we look over the previous uh, four years of uh, this assembly period, and we look for the vast majority of that time. We have had lower unemployment in Northern Ireland uh, per capita uh, than the rest of the UK. We have had significantly lower unemployment uh, than the uh, Republic of Ireland. And if you take to that 6.2 per cent, and you add to it uh, some of the things that we're trying to do, particularly around uh, growing the tourism industry uh, to a billion pound industry by 2020, proving on our golf tourism, all the jobs and everything else that will flow through that. I think it's important sometimes to look at what we have done um, and where we need to go. And if I look uh, just at the last year of results, and I congratulate my predecessor, I congratulate Invest NI and all the people in the Deddy Committee and everything that worked hard to deliver all of this. But in 2014-2015, uh, we delivered 13,829 jobs that were secured. That was the highest ever. Uh, we created 9,410 jobs. Again, that was the highest ever. We put in £1.4 billion of investment, the highest that we've ever done. We brought 25 new investors for Northern Ireland, again, the highest ever. And we got a customer satisfaction rate of some 85 per cent, again, the highest it has ever been recorded. Northern Ireland is very much open for business. Many of us saw uh, over the last couple of days significant investors here uh, for some of the sporting events 
but also taking time to look at what Northern Ireland has to offer. And I tell you, they went away very impressed. Call Mr. Raymond McCartney. Question number three, please. Under local government reform, local councils now have the responsibility for some local economic development functions. Invest Northern Ireland is a statutory partner on the community planning process and so will be actively working with a range of stakeholders to address the social and economic issues in the local area. Invest Northern Ireland is also co-funding the development of an integrated economic strategy for the council area. Call Mr. McCartney for a supplementary. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answer and indeed congratulating him on his recent appointment to the post. Uh, I'm sure the Minister will be aware that uh, the, the, the business start-ups that, that were administered through the local councils have now been stopped or, and are indeed cut, and particularly in neighbourhood renewal areas where they, they were of some, some value. I'm just wondering, as a minister, any proposals to alleviate that cut? Well, I think it'd be good to take a wee look just from where we are for the member's constituency, because I was doing that in research to answer his question. Um, the number of new jobs in uh, FOIL by Invest Northern Ireland has increased by 156 per cent in five years. Uh, that increased from 340 in 2009 to 871 in the years 13 and 14. So I congratulate all of those uh, in the FOIL uh, constituency who have worked so hard uh, to make that a success. Um, and of the 2,496 jobs that were promoted in FOIL during the five years, uh, if I was to look and break those down for you, uh, for locally owned companies, that's 1,269. And for externally owned companies, that is 1,227. So we've got a good balance between uh, both the locally owned and the uh, externally owned. Uh, the member raised the point of startups. Um, over the past five years, the Regional Start Initiative has offered support to 892 people in the FOIL constituency uh, area, and that's helped them develop their plan and a business plan for a new business. And in addition to the RSI, Invest Northern Ireland has offered £1.4 million of assistance uh, to start up businesses in FOIL over the last uh, five years. So, in terms of business uh, development and investment, the Invest Northern Ireland support to business in the region has not only been targeted at job creation, but also at other business development activities such as research and development and skills uh, development. And, you know, really, that's all about targeting and underpinning business competitiveness to sustain jobs and eventually lead to what we hope will be growth and more employment opportunities in your area in the future. Well, Mr. Gary Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answer so far and wish him well in his new post. Uh, can the Minister outline, and we did touch on it in his previous answer, uh, in terms of research and development, uh, what investment has been made in the Londonderry and Shaban Council area? Well, as I was given some of the figures there uh, in terms uh, of the new jobs that have, have been promoted. Um, I've also given some of the start-up figures uh, that were there and the investment that has uh, gone in. And we'll continue uh, to do that uh, in particular. And right across the board, there has been a number, both within FOIL and uh, also uh, in East Londonderry, um, again, locally owned companies, uh, 904 uh, jobs promoted and externally owned companies, three and support provided to 826 uh, people uh, in East Londonderry uh, constituency as well. Specifically to uh, Londonderry and Straban, um, you know, there is a good news story to tell. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, a long time to tell it. I get two minutes. But let me just look at two particular areas uh, in the Straban Londonderry area. Let's look at Waste Systems Limited. It designs and it manufactures uh, equipment primarily for use in the waste and the quarry industries. Uh, since its foundation six years ago, turnover has increased steadily year 
by year. Um, the company, currently based in Plum Bridge, County Tyrone, has secured a number of awards and accolades in recognition of the innovative nature uh, of the product, with virtually all sales being exported outside of Northern Ireland. There were two grants for research and development offers uh, have been issued to support the development of equipment uh, to separate light waste and stones uh, from a biodegradable product. Uh, a second one I'll briefly touch on is Seagate Technology Ireland, uh, a major research and development uh, project uh, in the area announced in October 2014, and it provides the read-write heads for Seagate's final hard disk drive products. All output from the Springtown plant is supplied to other parts of the Seagate group, uh, mainly in the Asia-Pacific areas. Call Mr. John Dalek. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, may I just add my congratulations to the Minister and to tell him that I believe strongly in the old adage, a new brush sweeps clean. Uh, would the Minister agree with me, and he has made reference to East, East Derry, would the Minister, being that new brush, agree with me that we desperately need an economic task force set up in the North West to identify the strengths of the region, but also to establish why there has been a dearth of potential inward investors to that region, which has been savaged over the last decade with losses of job and industry, textiles and farming. Well, can I thank the member uh, for his uh, congratulations. Um, and certainly anything we can do uh, for the constituency, uh, my door is open uh, to do that. And uh, I'll certainly try and encourage and push. And we've spent Many members in this House uh, over the past week will, uh, have sat with key investors from right across the world. Uh, they were over for the Gulf, and we used the time, uh, Karen McCavitt shaking her head, and many others, talking to those investors. Uh, and we will continue now. Some, we have to let business go where business goes uh, to a certain extent, but uh, we'll certainly try to look towards what we can do to support jobs and job creation. Um, and it is important because in East London Derry, it, the number of jobs promoted increased by 68 per cent over the past five years. And that went from 151 in 2009-2010 uh, to 254 last year. And as I was saying earlier to Mr Middleton, the 907, 907 jobs that were promoted uh, during uh, those five years, when you take a breakdown staggeringly, locally owned companies had 904 of those, and it was only externally owned companies had three. And over the past five years, the Regional Start Initiative has offered to support to 826 people uh, in East London Derry constituency area, helping them develop their plan, developing their new business. And in addition to the RSI, Invest Northern Ireland has offered £0.8 million pounds of assistance to start up businesses uh, in East London Derry over the last uh, five years. So, the door is open, and let's encourage to build upon what we know are very highly skilled and very highly motivated people uh, working in that constituency area. I call Mr. Jim Wells. Uh, question number four, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, new hotel developments may benefit from capital support from Invest Northern Ireland if the promoter can demonstrate that the project is market driven with the capability of attracting visitors from outside of Northern Ireland and not displacing businesses from similar projects. New hotel projects offering at least 30 rooms may be considered for support. Uh, Invest Northern Ireland is happy to engage with any promoter uh, who may meet the criteria for that support. Call Mr. Wells for a supplementary. And I would join with others in welcoming uh, Mr. Bell to his position, and I'm sure he will join with me in congratulating the previous holder of the position that he's building on a very firm foundation that has been led by Mrs. Foster, uh, and who has achieved so much in that particular role. Uh, will he accept that it really is uh, very, very regretful that a, a, a town the size of Downpatrick at the moment doesn't have a new, large, modern hotel? And that the issue of displacement doesn't arise because there's really no provision over a very wide part of East Down. And will his department continue to work with those who have really got planning approval for a hotel in the town uh, to try and ensure that this facility, which has been missing for so long, 
is brought back to the area. Well, the member makes uh, two very good points. Um, firstly, thank you for your congratulations, and thank you for the congratulations to the, my predecessor, uh, Arlene Foster, who did an amazing job. And the, the record speaks for itself. More jobs uh, created uh, than has ever been done uh, for any four-year period, and more foreign direct investment per head of population uh, than anywhere else uh, in the United Kingdom. And those targets that I earlier outlined significantly past show the level of competence and professionalism uh, that uh, Mrs Foster gave to the job. The, in terms of the hotel, I, if the member has a promoter or a developer that wants to come, uh, you can bring them to see me. I'll, I'll certainly work alongside them. We have to keep to the rules as I've let out. That's the same for everybody. Uh, right across uh, the, the, the place. And, you know, when I look at uh, Southdown particularly over the past weekend, it showed the very best of what Northern Ireland could be. Not only was it stunningly beautiful, but it, it brought some of the, the world's uh, best golfers. Of the sellout crowd of 107,000 people uh, that came, they were, not only were marvellously behaved, but we had 1,100 volunteers many from the South Down area, many from golf clubs right across uh, Northern Ireland and, and further afield, who gave of themselves to make that such a success. And in terms of hotel uh, accommodation, I had a difficult conversation on Saturday night uh, with uh, Jerry and Alison and, and their team. who had done a marvellous job with Visit Belfast because we are at the Pro 12 Rugby. And on the back of the Pro 12 Rugby, on the back of the hugely successful uh, Dubai Duty Free uh, Irish Open, you just simply couldn't get a hotel space uh, within uh, the Belfast uh, area. And so that, I think, will add the pressure to increase hotels elsewhere. I call Mr. Chris Hazard. Well, I'll get the free last and thank the Minister for his answer. Indeed, I too congratulate him on his new role. He's alluded, of course, to the success of the Irish Open. And I suppose on the back of the Irish Open recently in Port Rush, I think what we've seen is if whatever North Antrim can do, South Down can certainly do better. Uh, but unfortunately, in recent years, be it Invest in I or um, you know, the tourism bodies, unfortunately, South Down has played second fiddle to areas such as Belfast and, and North Antrim. Will the Minister now give a pledge to not just wait for those hotel developers to come to his department to invest in I, but to proactively engage with the people in South Down and business interests in South Down to actually build what can be a premier tourist resort, not just in the north, but all of Ireland? Yes, I'm more than happy um, to uh, speak to anybody. Uh, the door will be open. We'll make time available. Uh, Southdown is very definitely uh, riding high. Not only have you got one of the world's best uh, golf courses, um, but you've also got a population and a number of volunteers and people who are willing to serve and to develop the uh, tourism uh, industry there. And I, I want to build on that. I want to encourage that. That's what, that's what this is uh, all about. And I also put on record my congratulations to uh, Minister Ford and also to Minister Kennedy, because I never travelled in, I don't think, in all my life as easily uh, into uh, Newcastle as I did on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. The transport arrangements were fantastic. The uh, security was, was low-key, but, but, but brilliant uh, in that. And I think Every single person that I spoke to, both there and a number of us uh, were with Southdown MLS, were in Montalto House, and we, we privately spoke to a number of key investors. And just due to commercial sensitivity, I would love to tell you just who those people uh, actually were, because you would get an indication of the depth uh, of their ability uh, to promote jobs and, and boost the economy. But without exception, every single person who had visited Southdown was came away overwhelmed by the generosity of its people, by the beauty, uh, and also that not only could we, you put on a world-class event, but you could do it to a world-class standard. So anything I can do uh, to build upon the legacy that the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open has left us, and I think with 107,000 spectators, I mean it must surely rank as the best uh, ever that I'm aware of. Um, anything I can do to build upon that legacy, to develop the tourism offering, you know, consider it done. That ends the period for listed questions. Uh, we now move on to topical questions, and I call Mr. Chris Little. 
Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I add my uh, congratulations to uh, the Minister on his recent appointment? I thoroughly enjoyed scrutinising and supporting his work in his former department and look forward to working with him in his new post. Um, uh, can I also add my congratulations uh, to the Minister and to everyone involved with the successful Irish Open at the weekend, um, perhaps uh, in particular as well to, to Rory McIlroy for the, the ambassador that he has become for this region. Uh, in a recent PwC economic outlook, um, it was confirmed that Northern Ireland thankfully is, has enjoyed falling unemployment and expanding workforce, modest recovery in exports and property, and a vibrant hospitality and tourist sector. It did, however, also find that there are ongoing challenges to increase the average wages experienced by people question. in Northern Ireland and to productivity. Can I ask the Minister how he is going to respond to those key challenges? Firstly, can I thank him for his congratulations uh, to myself. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, he's done a tremendous job scrutinising me in my previous role. And uh, I look forward to working with him, particularly Free Spill Fast, which is an area that I love uh, too um, in the future. Um, and I think the one thing that uh, both Chris and I share with Rory McElroy is uh, we're all old school uh, friends. Um, and uh, I think I was old, the oldest among the three of them, but uh, sad to say. Anyway, the, uh, uh, the, you know, the importance of Rory McIlroy, just so that point doesn't get lost, and I will address your second point, uh, cannot be overestimated. Rory McIlroy comes in as the world's number one golfer, and on that he used all of his influence, and I know for a fact, because I've talked to many of the other golfers, he could have been doing a thousand other things, many of them financially more lucrative. And yet he set aside all of that, not only for the Rory Foundation, but also to bring a top-class list of golfers uh, here, and we are indebted to what he did. Where we have to go in the future is to create the high-value jobs, which I think is what the uh, member was uh, referring to. And we have to do that uh, by means of investing in our research uh, and development, uh, investing in our skills base, and also looking to where key areas actually are for growth. Uh, tourism, he has uh, mentioned, and we're looking towards growing that to a, a billion pounds industry by 2020. And we look towards, um, specifically, uh, the theme of the question is golf. Uh, to golf tourism, we're sitting somewhere around about 33 million pounds being brought in, and we want to grow that to 50 million pounds. And I think with not only a successful Open, a future Open 2017, and Hopefully, if everything works out, the Open uh, in 2019, we're on a trajectory to achieve that. Mr Little, first supplementary. Thank you, Minister, for his answer. Um, can I ask the Minister, however, what impact the current impasse uh, on welfare reform and uncertainty over budgets are having um, on the economy and on potential investment that he will be working to achieve in Northern Ireland? Well, again, with talks underway, I hesitate to say anything that could uh, be considered uh, not diplomatic. But let me say this. Business relies, what they tell me, on security and upon stability. Northern Ireland has been given a unique opportunity to uh, govern itself uh, through these devolved uh, institutions. And we are sitting uh, having surpassed many of the targets that I outlined earlier significantly uh, in terms of both jobs, investment, research and development, growth loan funds. We, we have surpassed all of those. And we have surpassed all of those because we have got a, a very highly skilled uh, people. We have a very highly skilled and motivated group of people. And when we are attracting now more foreign direct investment than any other part of the United Kingdom uh, per head of population, one of the key factors within that is Significant majorities of all of those businesses who have invested in Northern Ireland have subsequently reinvested. Now, I, I, can, I can give a sales pitch, but I am pointing investors more and more to people who have invested in Northern Ireland and who have subsequently reinvested, because that is the ultimate vote of confidence uh, in Northern Ireland, its people uh, and its skills. And you know, we have no option, I think, but to come to an agreement, and when we sit with the prize, can anybody say if we lose that prize of up to 40,000 uh, jobs, 
and growing our economy by 10 per cent, something which is in all of our hands if we can reduce corporation tax. And I know some significant businesses that I cannot name, but who work on a three-year cycle and are ready to start immediately increasing investment in Northern Ireland when we get a date and rate for corporation tax. Friends, that is very much the way forward. Call Mr. David Hildage. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and join with others in congratulating the Minister on his, on his appointment. Uh, can the Minister give us an assessment of Invest NIH's delivery on their programme uh, for government targets? Well, it, it, I don't think Invest Northern Ireland uh, can be congratulated uh, highly enough. Uh, obviously, it was my predecessor who took forward so much uh, of that work. Um, and I, I'll, it bears repetition because the facts speak for themselves. I mean, when we sat down for the programme for government, they said, look, realistically, be strategic. You know, look for a target that you can achieve. Look for a target that's realistic. And they said, at that stage, it was 20,000 jobs. And I remember in those discussions with the executive, and particularly with the first minister, they said, look, we want that to go to 25,000 jobs. And we pushed that because we wanted to really sweat every asset that we have. And you know, here we are in Northern Ireland uh, with uh, 37,277 jobs, almost a 50 per cent increase on what was meant to have been a very difficult uh, target uh, to achieve. And we, we need to continue with our levels of investment into jobs, and we have done that. We set the target of 1 billion, and we placed in today, I can record, 2.7 billion. Which, you know, in terms of investment, that is a 167 per cent increase uh, on where we were before. And if you talk to one of the key drivers is research and development, and we set a very competitive target of £300 uh, million, pounds, and we achieved £520 million. Pounds. So we can go out, and when we're talking to companies, and I was talking to companies uh, from early this morning, uh, we say in terms of, of R&D, which they're particularly interested in, we're looking at a 73 per cent increase on what was meant to have been one of the most difficult uh, targets. So uh, there have been difficulties with exports, and I, I don't uh, shy away from that. I'm going to continue to push and drive, but I think we all have to realise, too, that in exports, if the euro falls 15 points uh, against sterling, that will automatically make challenges to our market. Call Mr Hildage for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answer so far. Uh, but can he maybe, uh, maybe specifically update the House on the, on the most recent figures for 2014-15? I think I, I give some of them out again. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll happy to reiterate them because they are the strongest uh, performance um, that we've ever had. If we, I look at the headline uh, results for, in terms of jobs uh, for 2014-2015. That was 13,829 jobs, the highest we have ever uh, been able to achieve. Those were jobs that were actually secured. And then when we look at jobs that were actually created, it, for 14, 15, uh, the figures are 9,410. And again, in terms of jobs created, this is the highest number uh, we have been able to achieve. The, it is fueled by investment. And uh, the investment that we, for 2014-15, is £1.4 billion. Pounds. Again, the highest rate that we have ever been able uh, to achieve. And we're constantly trying to source new investors. And remember, success often follows uh, success. And in 2014-15, we had 25 new investors coming in uh, to Northern Ireland, more than we've ever had uh, before. And the important thing is, to ensure that the customers and the people uh, that invest in Northern Ireland serve are satisfied. And the latest figures I have for 2014-2015 show that 85% uh, percent have recorded a customer satisfaction rate with the work that's ongoing. I think that shows that Northern Ireland is in a very healthy position and a position that the onus now lies in all of us to build upon. Call Mr Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I join others in congratulating uh, my colleague into this position? Um, <clears throat> can I ask my colleague, in relation to uh, if he's had any discussions with the International Airport or indeed at the airlines, and actually increasing the number of routes available to the International Airport in my constituency, South Antrim? 
I thank the member uh, for uh, his congratulations. And I visited uh, the uh, international airport. Um, I visited as part of a 10th anniversary celebration of United Airlines, uh, which again um, was very productive. And when I looked at the number of people, not just in the airline industry, but when I looked at the number of people there in the travel industry that were there for that celebration, it shows just what a critical role Belfast International Airport plays. Um, we will continue. I've met both with Graham Kelly and I've met him on a number of occasions uh, subsequently at different events. Um, and we'll continue to do what we can to support their route development uh, endeavours. Um, we support the International Airport through the provision of tourism cooperative marketing assistance for airlines which serve BIA. And we also organise Northern Ireland specific stands at the annual World Routes Conference. Um, the next World Routes Conference takes place in September in Durban in South Africa. And I'm delighted and was delighted to announce last month that Belfast has been successful in its bid to host Roots Europe 2017. And that's a huge opportunity for Northern Ireland because it's a major conference that brings together decision makers from the airlines, from the airports, from the tourism authorities. It gives them an opportunity to negotiate and build relationships that will go on to shape the world's future air routes network. And I think to have that in Belfast is a huge vote of confidence in Belfast. Numbers of people involved from all around the world uh, will provide a significant boost uh, for our economy. And uh, we will work with BIA to develop new routes where feasible. Call Mr. Clark for supplementary. Can I thank the Minister for that very uh, fulsome answer? However, I'm sure the Minister, given that he's a Minister who's representing Northern Ireland and myself, will be concerned at the flow of traffic actually leaving this area to go to Dublin Airport. And I'm sure you'd agree with me that more needs to be done to actually promote Belfast International Airport and to prevent so many of our residents in this side of the border heading south. So really what I'm trying to hear from the Minister, what more can be done to try and prevent that flow of traffic to Dublin and keep them here in Belfast? Well, I think the, my department is an ongoing dialogue with our airports because we want to attract the routes to destinations that are currently served by Dublin Airport and which could be served directly uh, from Northern Ireland. And I think uh, all of us in this House would want to see uh, direct access to particular destinations such as Germany, um, Scandinavia, Canada. Uh, they would provide increased choice for Northern Ireland residents, but it would also improve our linkages to important business and also to inbound tourism. Um, support that we will provide as a department to Northern Ireland's airports is provided in a range of ways. And that includes the provision of the tourism cooperative marketing assistance. It's by organising uh, the Northern Ireland specific stands at the World Routes Conference. And we're also scoping the potential uh, for a specific uh, air route uh, development fund uh, for Northern Ireland. And I remember raised the International Airport. I was also delighted in my first weekend in office to fly back in uh, on the new uh, KLM service. Uh, from Schiphol, and that's hugely successful just for what that can offer. And I was delighted to talk to many of their uh, representatives uh, of both KLM who were giving me an indication that orders into the future were extremely healthy. But also the level of connectivity, uh, which is key to growing our economy, that uh, having uh, a direct flight into, in that case, George Best uh, Airport. I mean, that level of connectivity is huge for business because it gives us direct access America, Middle East, through Schiphol uh, and return. So the continuing development uh, of those air routes I regard as being vital for our economy and something that I intend to keep fairly top of the entry. Time is up. Um